Okay, hi everybody. This um, this is going. This is an introduction to uh, my Facebook group, um, United Peoples Forum, or uh, All Peoples um, Forum. I keep changing names, but basically, it's always the same group and the same concept and the same purpose. Um, the uh, group is to uh, is to create an atmosphere uh, uh, of uh, dialogue, ideas, and people who who understand, who see the importance of uh, changing, transforming, reconfiguring the United Nations um, into a an or a new organization that is uh, set in this, set in the same place that it is now. Um, on the principle that it is a com it would be a complete waste and a shame that one such an organism with all it, the infrastructure already reaching into every nation and uh, having the attention of every country it would be stupid to have an attitude of uh, saying that the United Nations is is um, worthless and should you know should be well, there's a little bit of animosity there has been for a while towards the United Nations, but the point should be to uh, re, re reconfigure it, redesign it, start all over from scratch. Um, without getting into all the various reasons, this video is just to def for the purposes of defining um, a better understanding, a better definition of what war is. It's important to um, understand war in a in a, a truer uh, much better much uh, more uh, um, oh Jesus I can't think of the word what it results in definition um, war is the um, the resultant or what happens to humanity uh, thanks not thanks um, um, oh Jesus! I can't explain it now. Suddenly, um, as a re as a uh, what results out of mankind having invented weapons, um, guns, and uh, armament armies. Um, it's commonly generally said uh, that war, um, and I always have this argument with people, is um, unavoidable. It's part of human nature. Animals do it. Animals fight. They gang up. You know, they make uh, um, monkeys make bands across the river from each other, and they all and, and so humanity. This has been for some scientists who apply uh, nature compar comparisons have made a, a huge mess um, and and diverted um, uh, s several definitions that we're dealing with today in society. Um, war is not uh, war is not part of it's not something that comes forth from human nature it is something maybe inspired uh, maybe sparked perhaps by um, attributes of human nature but the definition of war is something that happens because of weapons because of our inventions our instruments of war and um, armies and so forth and why this distinction, why this uh, discernment exists is uh, because if we only take the hostile, um, violent, physically aggressive, let's say, um, impulses or actions of mankind, whatever you want to conceive of, their murder um, and, and eventually killing somebody or... Um, or just belligerency in general, it is expressed from the human psyche along and together with all the other parts of our psyche, of our, um, of our mind, which comes, of course, inseparably unsepar as part of the same um, hum expression of human nature with all the other things that have to do with being a human mind, which also means empathy, compassion. In fact, um, love and empathy, uh, thriving, uh, togetherness, uh, integrity of the species, 
precedes, a collective precedes um, antagonisms and our shortcomings and dark sides of our brain because otherwise we wouldn't stay together as a society, we wouldn't survive uh, what is most important to, um, to an individual, to people, is that we ultimately are accepted, that we are together and bonded with others of the same species. And so in the actions of, of belligerency and violence that would naturally arise in the psyche are also involved this, the benevolent, obviously, suppressed at the moment of rage, uh, but as still part of the expression of our action within the uh, the expressions of our actions, and so to take for example, um, if uh, two bands of monkeys start fighting and they start picking up rocks and throwing them at each other, our hostile um, and violent actions are governed and are limited by our physicality, how far our um, arms can reach, punch, throw a rock, um, and the time in which uh, these things unfold and unfold socially, along with the other um, benevolent column forces of or um, aspects of our psyche. So, for example, if that band of monkeys happens to uh, end up killing a, uh, a baby monkey or a child, let's go back to the human example, we end up killing a child in, in, the, in the brawl, all the other, thank goodness, um, or thank God, all the other aspects present in individuals, which is, will check us, will have us notice it, will naturally slow us down because we will, that will have taken precedence. That part of our brain will also be stimulated, will be Simulated will actually will all of a sudden come forth, and um, it will tone down the uh, the the impulse or the momentum of the violence and the aggression. And so, um, our the nature part of our violence and hostility is f limited, or it's it tapers down. It's limited by by space, by how far we can what we can achieve physically with our bodies and also by our by the the time by the um it, but what happens in a given space of time in in so insofar as the uh emergence of our other aspects of our compassion of our empathy of our uh, acknowledgement that we don't want to hurt which gets suppressed in the moment of violence so in that given time this is what's important to understand in a given span of time uh, our whole mind will be exercised at one given moment uh, being taken over by our rage and uh, anger and resulting in all. But if we start harming too much or we kill, for example, children or, or, or hit an innocent girl that wasn't part of um, the fight, all of a sudden other forces, social and individual forces, will, will take that will um, come forth in the, in the mind and start atoning the overall uh, behavior. What happens is that we have invented, or this mind that is able to reach planets and other galaxies, and so, or theorizing about it anyways, but understanding um, such, so, so, so different to animals. So much, we're capable of curing diseases. We could have... Um, a world that animals would never even conceive of and understand things that are uh, light years ahead of animals. So we are unique in this regard uh, to the rest of uh, the animals, to the rest of the animal, to the rest of the creatures with an animal or primitive base at, at their being. We have, we're, okay, I'm changing subjects here, but we are able to uh, invent and uh, our mind has an ingenuity, uh, engineering dimensions that we construct, and we um, invented guns and weapons. We started by inventing swords. So the instrument also makes it easy, easy to throw a spear, easy to just pull a trigger. Uh, and that starts moving, starts displacing, and how much our violence and the time the time span that our violence occupies. So as a result, sort of a monster grows out of it. We, we start, uh, because of weapons, 
uh, we install the idea that now we can just go open the closet, pull out a gun. We can then calculate and plan on having armies. We train, create weapons, and plan for war and have incorporated war into society, into civilization. But we have what we have in, uh, incorporated is not something that results as from human nature. It's it's a, a phenomena, something that has occurred because of the intelligence of mankind and it able to um, mount an enormous apparatus of easily uh, accessible uh, affliction on others. So the that's when war is created. That's what war is. War is that we can easily uh, create unrefrainable and catastrophic uh, damage and, and, and um, affliction upon the other. It is not the same as what we're able to do limited by our physicality and our hands and the time for all of our psyche to to sort of balance out and uh, and um, and average out our overall behavior. With war we, we we're running forward ahead of us an apparatus that uh, destroys civilization and we control it with the uh, with the scale difference of uh, of a toggle switch if you see what I mean um, so this huge difference in scale and the the, the the fact of what respectively these two things can afflict upon mankind is what creates the different defini definition of war war is that which we create yes inspired sparked by what we are what is our tendency to not always be kind to the other but it is our intelligence that has invented war and so this is very important to distinguish and to discern uh, as a contrasting definition for war alone because it applies to um, how we later reason for example in our own constitution the, the right to bear arms when we think of the right to bear arms we um, we sort of take it for granted we assume that is it is uh, necessary in a world where um, somehow somewhere always without us having anything to do with it something will want to overrun us with uh, the use of force with military force as if it was part of human nature and in fact if you have this discussion with a lot of people politicians and people in the military they will always um, go straight to that uh, assumption that uh, war happens because of being humans, because we're human beings and other writings like the famous book from the Chinese whoever he was, I forget, uh, The Art of War um, also are things that we relate to it being unnecessary or an, uh, an, um, uh, a production of the human psyche. In reality I forget his name, the guy that wrote The Art of War, uh, the guy, the, the, the Chinese ancient person, um, um, was responding to this already having been created um, as, as, as civilization. So the, the, the war by definition already started existing when we were able to make spears because we were able to put them away and store them for when uh, a war would occur. We had already invented it, but that doesn't mean that it is something that we are helpless uh, before. We need to uh, be. Uh, uh, we need to be able to uh, observe and seize our own uh, action of inventing the weapon and what it will do to the human psyche, what it does to us. And if we understand that war is not necessarily connected directly and unseverably from our nature but it is something that is the result of the invention result of the spear of the gun of the bomb um, not of the rock not of a stick that we pick up and we throw across the room it is the result of this invention that we're able to launch uh, something with automation uh, or, or in the most basic and primitive form, a spear that we can, we can grab many and put them aside and then pick them all up or sharpen them. And it's a, it's a, 
It's, it's the maintenance of a craft that we have engineered. And this invention is what creates war. Not, uh, you know, uh, it is not something that um, has a stream that goes, that comes directly from mankind. It would seem not such a not not a great discovery or nothing so nothing too complicated to understand, but that we don't make this uh, splitting uh, discerning definition affects how we later reason the issues and the matters that have to do with bearing guns, with arming a country, with whether we ought to sell weapons or not sell weapons um, whether it is if whether we have an option or not because if we seize the fact that war and the, the, the maiming of our own children the self-destruction of the species and everything that comes from war is a result of what we invent then we will we would think a little bit more carefully at what we invent how we handle it how we administrate it um, and we wouldn't just think that it's something that everybody needs to have if one person has it. Um, so this de distinction is very, very important to uh, for other, you know, off-spin, off-shoot uh, discourses and uh, issues and matters going on in the world right now. Okay, that's it. That's uh, that's the uh, introduction to the Global People's Forum. Um, and it is about the reconfigure, redesign of the United Nations. And um, I don't know if I should add this now, but I should probably make another video. But I'll just say it quickly. Uh, the the what caught my attention lately, as far as it being useful to explaining one example of why the United Nations needs to be revamped and rebuilt. Uh, it's because basically its purpose, its founding principle, in, in its preamble, is about um, stop the is, is stopping the proliferation of war and uh, you know uh, solving this problem of mankind, among other things. But it's central to that. It's so that we won't go to war, or so that we can. I can't remember the wording exactly right now, but. Um, and the problem with the United Nations is that it has, since we didn't have this definition that I just gave as a civilization before the creation of the United Nations, we went along with understanding war as something that we can't seem to get a grip of, and we just have to try to try to stop it, try to um, handle, try to see if we can find a way of stopping it because this beast is out of control and, and we just don't know why it occurs. We know why it occurs. It occurs because of our inventions of uh, killing one another. Uh, but we didn't know this very, very clearly when we created the United Nations. And so what happens that, is that the United Nations is, has become a sort of uh, a controlling of uh, existing means by which we have um, organized and attempted to tackle this problem in the way civilization runs already. And so we have the case of the AYA recently judged on um, judged on uh, Boliv between Bolivia and Chile and determined that, um, that uh, Bolivia has no more case against Chile. Now, uh, like in so many other cases in the world, we have this, the the human level, the human aspect that we. This, my dog is driving me crazy. She she wants to she wants to go outside. Um, oh, Jesus, I'm gonna have to stop it right now, and I'll continue when I come back in, back inside. Okay, um, the International Court of Justice just recently ruled and in my humble opinion uh, <laughs> there's nothing humble about it is there um, it failed it completely failed in it what it's supposed to do and what the United Nations is supposed to do and what the International Court uh, is supposed to do which is 
to bring justice. Now to understand it, we have to backtrack a little bit and imagine, uh, imagine for example, let's go back to the definition of war and what it does. Let's say that we're in a in a street neighborhood street, and uh, there's a little gang on one end of the street, and a little gang that were friends and they grew up together, you know, uh, and another little gang at the other end of the street. Uh, they were friends, so they grew up, and all of a sudden, um, they're able to be aggressive with uh, weapons. Uh, they have a fight, they have a brawl, um, they threaten each other with weapons, and as a result of uh, unleashing uh, a, f a street fight, um, one gang says, uh, overcomes, overpowers the other one, and says, well now, this part of, uh, of the street is going to be ours, and you guys are going to have to go back a couple of blocks that way and that's the end of that and they stop fighting well that was the war that was what the war resulted in and so forth that was the war the war the situation was different before the war occurred in order to end the war they signed a treaty um, and they said well you know we accept that our our turf is going to start further down here. Now, in comes the International Court of Justice because the other gang that was pushed back says, you know, we're not happy with this. And it looks at everything and says, well, but you signed this, this agreement, this treaty, that you were going to accept that. Well, yeah, but these people didn't even live there. That was our area. They were we were letting them uh, come and do their business there. They never owned it. They never had settlements there. It was clearly everybody in the area, all the countries around, recognized that as our area. It was drawn in maps, and then they just used the war to take over that little part. And the Aya says, uh, "Well, but you signed the treaty and the paperwork and the legalities, the legalities." Um, say that you accepted that and so we are not going to favor your claim. Well, basically, what the International Court of Justice just did is uh, officialize, affirm, uh, sort of fix, fix the instruments of war. Uh, it wasn't guns in this case, but it was treaties. And so it completely fails in what the United Nations is meant to do, which is uh, to... Uh, Prevent, I think, is one of the, uh, you know, but you can't, it, it, you can't prevent war. You have to make it so that war doesn't happen, and so that whatever hurt and harm war uh, uh, afflicts um, is healed, is reverted, uh, so, so that people don't stay resented, so that injustice doesn't install itself on the earth, uh, so that injustice is eradicated. The thing is that before we never understood that um, war is actually a separate creation, uh, like I just explained, something that occurs as a result of um, our ingenuity. It is not something that we cannot, that we have no control over that will happen regardless. Because we conceived it that way, the United Nations and the International Court of Justice doesn't realize that it was actually all along in the position of a mediator to uh, have, uh, well, you can't end something if you're not going to control it. You can't say, I'm going to um, be a doctor and heal diseases if you're not able to eradicate that disease from the person's body. So the United Nations, which was installed to, um, to end wars on the planet, basically, at least that was the hinted or the presumption, the presumption, the presumption, and the suggested intent and purpose is failing. Moreover, it is not just failing; it is installing war because it is it has created another system by which it says we will make the systems that we have to administrate war work better and more comprehensively. And so the United Nations ends up installing war on the planet instead of preventing it. 
and it doesn't prevent it either because uh, what if, if, if indeed this is what the United Nations is doing and it's not preventing war, it's not stopping war, nations are going to say, well, first they'll decide to war, as we have demonstrated we continue to do, because if uh, we need to stop it or if there's a problem later, there will be the United Nations to sort of work that out or have everybody understand and accept the outcome. But it's not stopping countries from going to war. In fact, countries that are powerful and have weapons and know they can overpower most of the other country, superior weapons, they, can, they know they can overpower most of any other country, are not intimidated by the United Nations' purpose to end war because they feel they can have the war anyways. And, uh, you know, if it doesn't work out, uh, they're never... <laughs> so it's incredible, but... Um, Really, the United Nations is uh, is failing. It's not working. It's allowing for uh, injustice to be uh, per perpetrated uh, and uh, perpetuated. And the only way out of this is completely reconfiguring it, completely redesigning it, making a forum in which all countries design it together without special clubs, Sanctions, for example, peacekeeping forces, these are all things that are about installing the, the condition of powerful countries that are able to war and win upon, uh, over other countries. Uh, you don't see Cuba uh, getting hurt on, on ha having sanctions uh, placed against the United States because it has, uh, it has maintained, it has contributed to maintaining the... Uh, uh, the country impoverished and uh, uncommunicated to whatever degree and extents uh, its sanctions and blockades have and for uh, you know it's only the powerful country so we already know this but perhaps what we didn't understand before is that it's because we didn't we never really seized we never really had a good grip on the fact that war is defined differently to whatever you would want to connect and tie it uh, or link it to aggre the aggression, hostility, and aspects of human nature. That's one thing, that's human nature. We, we uh, have produced war because of a third element, our inventions, our instruments. And then what that has done in the context of uh, uh, speeding up the... Um, the unfolding of those instruments uh, doings and therefore being able to practically in, in sense of practicality have it as a new introduced element that we can use we can say you know before for example two um, two clans let's imagine before there were spears invented let's imagine that it's just us without any weapons at all um, there's animosity, there's group fights even, you know, there's people shouting at each other across the river and it all gets worked out and it all get, they all vent it out, they, they get out everything that they need to tell each other. Maybe there's a few fist fights, maybe somebody swims across the river and blah, 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 makes a whole thing, you know, and then comes back all, all bruised up, you know, and, you know, we let them, we showed them, we told them what's, you know, what, you know, whatever <laughs> they were angry about, they argued. Um, but nobody's able to put away, no, nobody's able to sort of um, uh, reserve a continuation for that thanks to being able to have a disposed, uh, a disposable the element of war and civilization. So because we have created war as an element of civilization, we're able to resort to it and give continuity to conflict instead of resolving it and absorbing it. So it is the weapons, it is the instruments that have created the phenomena, the social phenomena and occurrence of war itself. It's two different things. There's no link, no un unseverable link. There is a, a thread, there's a fine thread, but the, the, the change, the enormous change of scale, it's a grotesque, enormously, suddenly... Uh, a gigantic change of scale makes it as if they were two completely different things. One gets defined one way 
and what has to do with human nature gets defined a completely different has to do with biology with uh, human sciences and nature but war's definition has to do with our ability to uh, to instrumentalize to uh, um, structure structure war armies weapons and then have it as an element in civilization that we can later use giving continuity so it, it it's two things and not only is it identifiable by definition as two things it is also identifiable identifiable as two things by how differently they each behave what war is able to do to humanity and what our human natural aggression and violence is able to do to humanity it's like this tiny it, it, it fizzles out it disperses in time and and interaction where war is something that uh, is uh, something that you know can always get built up and constructed really quickly and all of a sudden it's up and going and destroying uh, cities all over <laughs> all over again so this um, separation this discernment of, uh, of of these two is of utmost importance in order to understand other things that have to do with the United Nations, with our Constitution, with producing and selling and you know making arms uh, available as if uh, we're doing a good thing by arming countries. You know, <laughs> we're like we're doing a good thing by by uh, by sharing our, our weapons technology or the presumption is that it's part of humanity and we can't do anything about it. It really changes that whole game, that whole, that whole, uh, to game changer, as they say nowadays. Um, and anyway, so welcome to the group. Uh, and um, what I just explained has to do basically with what is still the central um, uh, purpose of, of creating a world organization. Uh, to stop this the destruction of, of families and children and maiming and horrible uh, stupid but anyways I'm gonna get started again um, that's it welcome to the group if you care to join and um, and uh, you know may fare well and with and, and use well whatever you may have learned otherwise from from this little dissertation thanks